So welcome everybody to the fifth talk of uh, our series of artist talks with the curator. I'm more than excited to have just someone I truly admire um, artistically and as a person as a whole. Um, I'm very, very honored and excited to have her work in an exhibition, and even though she's killing it in so many other ways with exhibitions and just great stuff um, throughout her arts practice. Um, thank you, Sharon. Welcome for welcome. First of all, thank you for being here and welcome and thank you for allowing me to just work with you and include this amazing piece in the show. Well, thank you. You know, we've been working together for a while now, you know, yeah. and and, you know, you know, I feel about you. I've always admired you and, you know, supported the work that you do. And, um, you know, I mean, that this relationship means a lot to me. And so, you know, yeah. if you ask me to do something, I'm going to be there for you. So. Same here. Like that's, <laughs> and I, I just, I love the work that, first of all, the work that you had available because you've been grinding out so hard, putting out some beautiful <laughs> works. And anyone that's watching this, our show is up uh, at Band Devices right now. It's beautiful. It's extensive. Um, it really takes abstraction and, you know, art painting as sculpture to a new level, I think, and adds, you know, so much more in the traditions of like, you know, I, I look at, especially with this piece, I think immediately of like Jack Whitten, um, you know, just the way, he, the way the materials just sit and fit, especially one of the works that were at the Soul of the Nation uh, exhibition. Um, mm -hmm. and it, it, it really, really sits. I, I was, I was honored, you know, to have this specific work and have this one be available because <laughs> when it came, when it came into the, to the space and I, you know, you see photos of work and, you know, you're like, oh, that looks great. And, you know, and you really, you know what you're getting, but you don't know how it feels in a sense until you actually walk into it. This one, when I pulled the plastic off, you just immediately felt it because, you know, the 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 black part is that tar. No, you know, I have been experimenting with materials for a while. You yeah. know, and I created this when I was on residency in Michigan at the Oxbow School of Art and Artist Residency. And uh, one of the things that I do is kind of work with what's around sometimes, you know, I brought my usual stuff, which is because I'm always going to paint on paper and then cut and tear it. Mm -hmm. And I knew I was going to do that. And I brought a little bit of acrylic, but not a lot. So my palette was going to be limited. My materials are going to be limited. And I had been experimenting with um, this foam material and on um, the backing of um, this stuff that you use to patch walls. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. It's yeah. a mesh and it's kind of sticky. And so I, I was using this, plus some uh, enamel paint, and then there's, um, of course, the cut and torn paper, and there's acrylic. So there's a lot of stuff in, in there. But I was going for that texture, and I was trying to find something to make that raised, deeply black mm -hmm. texture, almost like the top of a million heads running across the canvas. Yeah. It, it, you know, it, it and felt uh, like as if it was a burnt, charred piece. Yeah. Of, you know, whatever yeah. was in front. I, I I got the feeling as if um you were looking through a charred window. Mm -hmm. Um, and you were in that that piece was the burnt window pane of like the seal, like you're kind of looking through it, and you're almost either right outside the house that's on fire looking in or inside yeah. the house that's on fire looking out. So it was, yes. a, it was a very uh -huh. interesting perspective. Um, yeah, yeah, that's interesting that you said that because I was thinking about a couple things 
in there and we were talking about products of empire and i was kind of thinking about the empire of the confederacy mm. and how it used human labor um to make this black it's called the black belt and this black belt ran all throughout the southern states because of the land being really rich rich land mm -hmm. so they were able to grow cotton tobacco other sugar all kinds of through this black belt um that ran through the southern states mm -hmm. and they turned it into an empire of course using free labor mm -hmm. um mostly um black labor i i think they had exhausted their um their ability to use indigenous people um you know as free labor it didn't work out well but it made the south rich beyond rich it made them an empire to where they felt they could challenge the whole country yeah as to you know we want to be our own place <laughs> is the money was that deep into that and and so to me the bottom part of it you know has my 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 seed that i've been using a lot mm -hmm. to indicate ground but it also is the burning down of it mm -hmm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. so there's two things there's how it came to be and then how it's came to disintegrate in that that flame of of um resistance against what they were doing and what there's you know not just you know because you know what the confederacy was doing was yeah leveled there's a lot of things that caused the civil war it was partly mostly economics and you know power a power struggle but yeah, it, well, anyway that you mentioned the uh flames because that is definitely there and some people see you know blood in it or well, mm -hmm. I wasn't intentionally doing blood but I you know I get all of those things that come about because of the color and color color is a trick especially reds are a trigger mm -hmm. for most people you're gonna feel something in that red mm -hmm. you know and then you're gonna feel landscape because I made things horizontal and then you're going to see sky because of the blue. These are just symbols that people kind of start to um, form, you know, from childhood, we start to decode our world and start to understand what things mean. So when I say my work is abstract, it is also representational because, um, you know, human beings are capable of very complex thought and very um capable of decoding symbols yeah you know even the letter a is a symbol it's just three intersecting lines but that let people understand what that letter means is an abstract three <laughs> intersecting lines yeah it means something to us and that's what we do with abstraction uh throughout our entire world you know if there's a red light you know and you're driving your car you better stop yeah <laughs> you know i mean there's symbols all over the world and so people who work in abstraction can use can use that to tell our stories it's i think that's amazing you know viewpoint because throughout art history especially with black artists we've always had to fight to you know had use abstraction as a representational figure or a representational starting point, you know, because portraiture usually defined, you know, the black, vi the black visual experience. Mm -hmm. um, and lately, the more I actually are studying, studying and learning about more abstract artists, I'm starting to get a clearer picture about what, you know, the black experience is through art. And mm -hmm. the way I'm seeing like with this work and the placement of this work with Chooks's piece, mm -hmm. I think brings out both of them because the with the horror of the, the sculpture, 
looking directly at that. I think it's it, mm. it's the perfect image I wanted folks to see walking in where it was someone screaming, like, look at what happened. You mm. know, like they're sitting and looking at horror because while both works are just dynamic and beauty, that's starting the story of the rest of the show. Mm. You know, and being able to see what's happening you see like one one uh one visitor came in and i sat and talked with her and we were in front of your work and she just was like baffled like how did she get that you know that caulk or black or i forgot <laughs> even what it's called she was like how did that she was like that she's like you feel you really feel that painting and then side by side i understand the story and then as you start to explain you know, um, because you can never, as a curator, explain exactly what the artist was thinking. You know, I always just kind of give what it makes me feel, you know, mm -hmm. and she was like, whoa, you know, because she thought it was, you know, something biblical because uh -huh. she thought of the burning bush uh -huh. know, immediately. And I was like, wow, I didn't think about that either. But when you look at that, because she looked at Chooks's piece and was like, okay, I see that as Moses and the burning bush. Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, whoa, okay. So that it really allowed me to further understand how people were gathering experiences from abstraction, you know, even more than they were from some of the portraiture. And then, you know, different visitors, you know, have different experiences. Mm -hmm. but sure to have that large abstract piece sit next to a sculpture and people immediately get it. It was almost mm -hmm. like a reflection of them understanding what they were walking into. And I thought it was just, it, 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 it worked so perfectly. Like it was, great. it was just, just top notch, top notch. Thank um, you. But so that's what I like about abstraction is that it gives the you were a lot of room mm -hmm. to explore it. I mean, if you really want to stand in front of an abstract painting um, and just, you know, especially artists like Jack Whitten who used materials so amazingly, you know, he's, he really has been one of my big inspirations, but there are many artists who use oh, um, <laughs> materials you know, to to further um, um, fine tune what they're saying in, in the work, because uh, some abstract artists are leaving it very poetic or musical or something like that. But there are a lot of Black artists who are doing what Black people have always done in this country is put hidden messages in it. Yeah. We've always done that. And so um, I'm using for me, um, I'm inspired by a lot of artists who use materiality in their work. Um, and I'm always experimenting with materials to see, you know, how can I use this material symbolically so that mm. people might read it in a certain way, but also give them leeway to read it in their way. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm not, a, you know, force, I'm choosing abstraction because I'm not forcing a conclusion yeah you know and, i'm giving you room to to wander through it and see what it makes you feel and and what prompts and then i named it the black belt so <laughs> you can kind of if you want to research what the black belt is just you know google it <laughs> yeah i think that's important you know and yeah. You know, I, I also got the feeling of like the relationship to uh, Howard Dina Pendel. Yes, um, absolutely. With using, you know, of the materials as almost guides. Um, mm -hmm. What I really love about her work in relation to your work, especially this piece, is that each, each part of the material is an individual and plays a part in the mm -hmm. whole thing. Like mm -hmm. you can literally pick out a piece and remove it and it changes the dynamic of the whole painting. Wow, you said that. You said yeah. that. I was telling somebody that. <laughs> like it really at does. One of my paintings. I was I was telling them most, many people would not know that if I move this one thing out, I would feel it. And when it's, it's, yes. it's determined, put it back, 
or take it away. And I could feel the whole feel dynamic it. of the, and it's, mm -hmm. see, there you go, minds. Great. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> that's exactly true. I'm so glad you said that. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, you can really, you can really feel the emotion um, to where like each piece has, has been touched, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's not, you know, one of those situations always, and, you know, not to knock any artist that, you know, does this, but like, I don't feel like it was just, you throw the painting on the ground and you just sprinkle things where they lay, you know, like there's an actual, there's a strategy and a structure to how, to how that's placed, even to where the, the gold and the light, you know, in between uh, the fire or the flames to where, you know, speaking like, you know, there's there's light at the end of the tunnel. There's you know a way out of this. Um, even with the sky, you know, having both of those things, you know, kind of like even out the work. Um, mm -hmm. It it gets really interesting, and it's like it just it really it really and even the way like the the blue different blue pieces drip down into the fire. You know, mm -hmm. as if it's trying to fan the, not fan the flames, but, you know, cure them in a sense. Um, like where different parts of the sky, the rain or whatever that possibly may be, is trying to really cure what's happening down there. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, and maybe that's where, you know, the visitor, you know, saw, you know, biblical portions of it, you know, seeing rain and, you know, maybe 40 days and 40 nights of, you know, treachering through these different, you know, turmoil style places. And I know I'm kind of like going off, but I just see, you know, so many possibilities. And, you know, like we talked about what abstraction could be. Um, and it just, it really, it really sticks, you know, for lack of a better term, like it just, it really sticks. And like with all of this, like what's included in that? Is that just like paper and you know, dried paint or? Yes, all of them. <laughs> so there's, um, you know, my, all my paintings are, are collages of some sort or, and they're built, not painted, because even though I'm using paint in it and I'm using ink in some of the places, uh, there's a sprayed ink that I use in some of my my paintings. Um, so I'm actually tinting the canvas. Mm. And this is raw canvas is not gessoed. Wow. So that it it is really eating up that ink and absorbing it and everything that sits on top of this piece. I usually gesso everything. But this one, like I said, I was on residency. And I, um, I bought this canvas in a local store there and it wasn't gessoed. And I said, am I going to buy a gesso or no, we're just going to go. go, go right ahead. <laughs> we're just going to go on this raw canvas here. And so that's how it kind of came out. But the materiality is really important. I, I, there's clumps of dried stuff. There's um, thickened uh, paint with really thick, heavy gel medium. There's... Um, little pieces of pulp, paper that has become pulp from um, from wetting it there's you know there's a lot of stuff in here and there and again there's a lot of there's a lot of cut or torn paper um but there is dried paint um dried uh, acrylic in this as well as i had some dried latex by the time i got home with this um, it was still on stretch when I brought it home. And so I was able to add a few materials to it. Uh, as I, I put it on stretcher bars, I had some materials that were that I had home, like um, that dry paint, which I like to use in my because it's nice and thick and, <laughs> you know, I'm fattening up the surface of the of the you know, because I wanted to have a visceral, a visceral feel, you know, that when people come across it, you're just going to like feel it, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and it's because the surface is really fat. And, and, you know, 
you probably might be tempted to touch it or, or oh, yeah, we had to tell what it people, is, what touch. is that, you know? So I wanted it to try and stimulate a visceral reaction because I'm, I'm talking about a really visceral subject matter. Mm -hmm. And I wanted people to feel it, which I want that to happen in all my work because I, I may have an intellectual explanation for you, but I really want you to feel something about it. And it can be your own interpretation of it, but I want art to be used to stimulate people's intuition, their compassion, you know, their, um, there are other senses other than just sight, you know, that we use to be able to understand our world, uh, spiritual, our spiritual sense, our, you know, our intuitive sense. Um, those are, those are senses that are very important to stimulate in human beings it, in all times, especially in these times, though, to not just judge the world of what you see, you know, what is your intuition and your spirit saying to you? Yeah. You know, I want people to learn to use those senses more. How important is it for artists, especially, especially Black abstract artists, to use their work to retell stories of the past? Like, you know, re-educating, you know, this generation about the Black belt, you know, and other topics through not just portraiture where people can relate through um, mm -hmm. visual pleasure, but sometimes works that allows them a little bit of a challenge to try to understand. How important is it for people or for artists, I'm sorry, to tell those stories through abstraction? Well, I always just use myself, you know, and, and the artists who have inspired me, you know, because I think art is, is very open and that people who are artists can choose whatever they, they whatever makes them want to make art, you know, they should use that and, you know, just be authentic and genuine about it, you know, as long as you're just not slapping some stuff together because if I do this, it's going to sell for 10, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm not really into that. You know, I, I think you should make art because it's important, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it's great to sell it, of course, and have people. But I think that if you put that whammy in there, people will buy it, you know, because they're going to feel something. But yeah. Put some whammy in it, you know. And um, for me, the artists that I have always admired told those stories in, who are who are abstractionists. But there are other artists whose work I still love, uh, who who aren't really heavy into putting messages in their art. They're they're you know in love with color or, and, and that's just as valid to me because if if you are just really making beautiful color filled paintings and that's your main impetus the very fact that you are black has already redefined that painting because you are a black artist you know and this is the way you see the world using color but um whether you put messages or narrative or stories of any kind um, it's certainly up to you. It's just that that's been my choice. My choice, I've always been, um, you know, when I first became um, a young adult, you know, I was um, like 17, 18 year old and, and being able to understand the world. We, we, were, we were at the end of the Martin Luther King kind of era and moving into the Black Power where, you know, I was going to um, us organization meetings and Black Panther meetings. And, you know, the, that was how my mind was being shaped. You know, I was yeah. listening to Mary Baraka, you know, and mm -hmm. those were the, Angelus Davis, that those are the people who had shaped my mind, you know, and I can't unknow what, <laughs> what I know, you know. 
Yeah. You just can't all of a sudden, oh, I, I didn't hear that. No, you heard it. <laughs> you know? Most and so definitely. I've always felt it important that um, that your work is partially social, uh, political in some way, because that's just, I think it's important. Because I always quote Toni Morrison, who said that you're, that the best art is political and should be unquestionably, unquestionably political, but irrevocably beautiful at the same time. You know, that you can do both. You can create beauty, but you can also say something about um, the world as you know it, you know. Yeah. And that's pretty much what I'm doing is that I'm I'm not really trying to load it up or with a message that you have to hear it my way and mm -hmm. think what I it's not that at all. I'm just expressing the world as I understand it. You know, what I've learned about the world as a black woman. And that's this is the these are the kind of things that resonate with me. So I'm just sharing that with people. And that's that's that sentiment is like exactly, you know, that theme or what the theme of the show is supposed to emulate, you know, and just, you know, being that we are products of an empire, whether that's America, whether that's the empire of our families or, you know, whatever regime that we, you know, adhere to, um, and just allowing artists to think about that you know in relation to their own practice and how they see you know these products of empire and what does that even mean and i've been just so 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 excitedly happy um in the translation you know of the artists in the show of what that is and what that can be and you know i mean the visitors as well you know they've been just really talking very very positively about you know just the show as a whole and the thought you know of the artists and thinking about how their practice relates to that and it just really adds a level of um slow walking you know i i like when people you know get a chance to really um take their time with works because it's something that they didn't see in the five previous galleries you know like yeah. it's after a while you know there's a lot of you know spaces to see a lot of good art but after the third or fourth gallery that you do when gallery happens especially if the work starts to be similar it starts to run together mm -hmm. um so i wanted you know folks to come in and see the works like the black belt and stop and take a look at its material take a look at you know what it could possibly mean look at it in relation to the works that are around it because the exhibition is trying to tell you a story it's trying to allow you to think about how these works fit into the concept of your own story you know the black belt can mean something totally different to someone else um you know it could talk about you know black neighborhoods and redlining and you know all of these type of things yes. um and i love when you said you know just like you don't want to trap the meaning for everyone else you want them to be able to think about it in you know their way and you know i i think if even if you were to have like a video representation of everyone that came in and said well i look at it like this you'll probably get a hundred different ways of how people see it and that's the beauty of abstraction Absolutely. That's the exciting thing about art in general, mm -hmm. is that it really is a, a medium that can spark so many, much dialogue among people. You know, if people ask me what it's about, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll tell them, but if they want to just sit with it and, and, and enjoy it and think about it on their own, that is really wonderful. But I think these exhibits, and I credit the curator for um, this exhibit because your statement um, here, if if anybody reads the statement, they're gonna get um, what that exhibit is about. You know, it's gonna set a tone for, um, you know, 
um, you know that I'm a big fan of your writing and your your thought processes. So when I read, oh, products of empire, that is so but dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen to this. This is just really great. Um, you know, so I think the the curators are also very very important to setting the tone uh, for the viewer to be able to interpret and understand the work and i think that when people come to an exhibit they really should take the time to read the curator's statement take the time to read the titles and just just get an idea of what is being said even if you want to go on in any other direction with it at least you kind of understand what the thought process is um, because curation is another art form that is in you know in lock with with what the exhibit is about and so reading the curator's statement is really really important for people i'll be trying and to tell them you were brilliant you know you were brilliant as usual thank you i'll be trying to tell people to read the stuff and you know you try to get qr codes and stuff but that's also yeah. um stuff that we as curators and gallerists and, and institution folks have to work on with engagement you know and i think artists have that down um by presenting you know great visuals and things for people to engage with mm -hmm. and i think it's you know admin's job to really provide um the the extensibility you know of exhibitions to really allow people to be able to take away this education and you know that's my goal in working with you know great artists like yourself to be able to figure out ways to extend this experience for mm -hmm. people to where they can learn about the actual black belt and you know take away reading materials and things like that to where um they they are actually educated again through artwork sort of like pbs does <laughs> You know, if you'd like to know more about it. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> exactly. Yeah. So exactly. yeah. But the so. title itself, Products of Empire, is, you know, I mean, any intelligence person is, is gonna know, mm, that that's a heavy title. Yeah, it's it, it's, <laughs> it, it's it's talking about a it's talking about yeah. a lot, you uh -huh. know. Yeah, it, it, a lot. So, you know. Yeah. So, so in anyway, my yeah. in my PBS voice, if you'd like to know more about Sharon's work, <laughs> right. you can check out again her uh the exhibition is on view until February 20th at Art Share LA from uh Wednesday to Saturday, one to five. You can also pop over to Band of Vices, as we mentioned, and check out her other solo show, which is amazing and full of color and just things that pop off the wall and hang in the middle of the of the exhibition and you got a nice little scenery and everything is just is beautifully beautifully set up and curated and just a great job to everyone involved you don't want to miss that um thank you so much sharon just for thank always you. just supporting me and being a part of this exhibition and just giving us education on you know what how we should look at you know not only your work but artwork in general and mm -hmm. you know it's just it's I'm always appreciative and I always get to learn from all my artist friends and I'm just, I'm totally, totally appreciative. Thank you so much. So y'all get to following Sharon. You can go to her Instagram at, at Sharon Barnes 4702. It will also be on the recording of this artist talk and y'all have a great day. And thank you so much, Sharon. Thank you so thank you. much. Bye-bye. Love Bye. you. Have a good one. Okay.